Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, recovering after the review of a horrible and boring found footage sequel to the original Unfriended, simply called Unfriended Dark Web. And what a horrible mess that was. But now, as Joe Cool likes to put it, I need to chill out. <laughs> because I am going to review the same concept, you know, a film being shot on a computer screen but a much better film. This time it's not a horror film, but it's a mystery and drama thriller simply called Searching. It's a story about an Asian father from San Jose, California, who's a widower, and he has his daughter that's living together, who eventually went missing, and it was up to him to search through the internet along with the help of the detective to find her. So, again, it's from the same producer, Timu uh, Bekovitov. I don't know if I said it right. Because it's the same man who not only gave the film Nine and Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter, but of course he did work on the, the first two Unfriended uh, movies. God, that was a waste of time I had to watch those. But at least this movie has smart and intelligent people. They're trying to find a way to help them. Especially with all these twists and turns that's about to happen. And the best part about it is that the characters are not dumb. I'm happy for that. <laughs> um, would I see this movie again? Maybe. Maybe I'll pick it up on Blu-ray when, it, when it's available, so who knows. Um, it's not doing quite as well at the box office, despite the fact that it's making $61.2 million worldwide. So it is making its profit from its um, original budgets. I think around the thousands or maybe $1 million. Um, that depends, because you know they did have high-paid actors uh, joining in and it's the first time that we saw John Cho from Harold and Kumar films along with Deborah Messing from Will and Grace including the new Will and Grace to, that's on NBC and several others that she's been in I mean this is the first time they actually did a found footage movie together they never did it before so this is really interesting because mostly they're getting other actors doing it, trying to become more like real people, going for that. You know, just using social media such as Facebook, Twitter, uh, UCast, uh, Instagram, Bitcoin, or also searching on the news that are reporting this, uh, many others. So they're joining in and it was really uh, well done. I mean, despite the fact that the concept is quite lazy, but that's okay. I mean, I guess it just depends on how they do it. It stars once again John Cho with Michelle Law, Deborah Messing, Sarah Son, Joseph Lee, Stephen Michael Each. Rick Sarabia and Sean O'Brien. Uh, it's written by Anish Chaganti along with Sev Ohanian and it's directed by Anish Chaganti. The movie began setting their home in San Jose, California. We meet the father, David Kim, who's played by John Cho, who is looking for all the old photographs and videos including the ones that are on YouTube through his Windows XP computer of his daughter Margot who's played by Michelle La along with Kaya Don Lo, Megan Liu and Alex Jane Go, along with his wife Pamela who's played by Sarah Saul who two years ago had passed away from lymphoma. So ever since then, 
David and Margot have become completely distant from each other. But they are together at home. So one night, Margot suddenly goes to her friend's house, just for her study group. And while David was asleep, you know, he was just making contact with his daughter, you know, through Facebook Messenger. And he started uh, posting uh, photos of her and, and him, even her mother. Well, also, he even posts uh, a photo of of the trash can because she forgot to take out the trash. It's, it's just funny how he doesn't take out the trash himself. Yeah, but <laughs> you get the idea. Um, but also, uh, she even left her laptop in the kitchen. Uh, and anyway, Margot attempts to call him three times, so he missed all the calls. David's brother, Peter, who's played by Joseph Lee, who was just in the middle of cooking the dinner, trying to find a secret recipe, and David just helped him out, searching through his files on his uh, Windows XP computer. Yeah, and just mentioning all the, the ingredients uh, through the, the Facebook Messenger. He was also trying to contact him to, to explain the, what happened to Margot a lot lately and why she's uh, not paying attention why is she not taking out the trash and all of that why she's not paying attention with her father he's trying to see what's going on then the next morning uh, David is unable to reach Margot but he assumes that she actually had risen early and gone to school you know real fast you know just so um, she, she can continue to do her studying and you know, be able to get ready for a test you know, with her friends and then be able to go out. She even has piano lessons too. Uh, you know, just getting ready because she does play the piano. And she's been practicing for years now and she's getting better and better at it. Anyway, David later called uh, Margot's piano instructor, but it's informed that Margot had canceled her piano lessons uh, six months ago. Um, then he discovered that margot has been pocketing the money for the lessons, but suddenly transfer, yeah, actually transferring through her Bank of America account of $2,500 uh, $2, um, all the way to a delete account on Bedmo. So now he begins to find out that Margot is missing. Uh, David called the police and he hires a detective named Rosemary Vick, who's played by Deborah Messing, who asked for the information on Margot's personality and friendship. So David had to look through Margot's laptop, which is an Apple computer. Yeah, it's an Apple Mac OS X uh, laptop where he had to search for all the information that she has, you know, all the photos and all of her friends and all of her social media. He suddenly accesses Margot's Facebook and speaks to all of her contacts of all of her friends to see if where they last saw her. And they're trying to see where, where she last contact all of her friends and everything. Well, they haven't seen her for a while and, and they're trying to see if Maybe she actually had went out uh, with her friends to a concert or something like that. But after that, um, we haven't heard from her. Um, that is until Rosemary suddenly um, found a traffic camera footage uh, through a, a, a local Chevron gas station and her car is being passed by going straight to the Barbosa Lake. Because that's where she likes to go to, yeah, you know, just to, just to escape, you know, her peace and everything. Um, David also found out that Margot had made a fake ID for herself, so it looks to me like she just ran away. So now David suddenly uh, discovers Margot's been using another account, uh, a blogging site called Ucast, where 
she frequently spoke to a working class girl by the username Fish and Chips. Uh, Vic investigated this as well and reports to Fish and Chips that the person is innocent, that he's actually from Pittsburgh. Then he checks on Margot's uh, Instagram just to find out that she visited uh, Barbosa Lake, so she actually went there before. And by the next night, um, he begins to search uh, through the map of where the Barbosa Lake is at. And then he begins to try to contact uh, Vic to see where she might be at. And then uh, that's where he found her car that's being drowned. So they had to pick up the car. It has the envelopes of $2,500 inside, but it has all this other stuff included. But her body wasn't there. So apparently she might have been taken from someone. Like, like someone might have kidnapped her. And David had to try to find his way to search through the internet to find where her boyfriend might be. Because he was probably the one that took her. Yeah, they went to a concert and all these other places. Um, and at this rate, they actually went to a movie theater. So, David suddenly went straight to the movie theater. Yeah, you've seen all these news reports uh, through uh, the internet, you know, like ABC7, um, which I think it's KABC7 in Los Angeles, even though in San Jose there was an ABC station called uh, KNTV11. So. So they must have taken this from KBC Los Angeles, as I could tell. Um, so both David and Rosemary Bick were searching through the entire car, which has all these evidence around. You know, they even have a jacket and envelopes and everything. So they're spending some. They're spending the entire week trying to search for her everywhere, but no such luck. Um, while David, of course, um, only went to a movie theater, which, believe it or not, was the movie theater that's located in, in North Hollywood. Yes, uh, Valley Plaza 6, that's owned by Regency Theaters. Yeah, it used to be United Artists Theater. And I actually went to that theater uh, several times just so I could watch all these double features of all the films I missed. Yeah. <laughs> So pretty soon this movie will be played over there as well, so this will be a surprise. Um, but yeah, they show a YouTube video of, of him beating the shit out of the guy who might be responsible for kidnapping uh, Marco. So it might be one of his boyfriends. So I, I don't blame the guy because he was, you know, I mean, how would you feel if your daughter's been missing and you're trying to search for him? So it, it all leads to a lot of twists and turns that that seems to go on before he finally gets a chance to find his daughter. And this movie caught me by surprise because I'm not a big fan of this particular concept of having the film being shot on the computer screen. Because I do wish they had used some other camera angles that they would have shot. Like I, I kind of wish they had used some real time footages. Like like at this rate, just like, like movie time footages as you can see where they... Like, they could just show like parts of the um, the computer screen of all the the information and all the social media stuff that they put in, but then show some other interesting shots of all the camera angles that they put in. So it just makes it clear. But I I know I know I I'm getting ahead of myself too. Um, there are some interesting moments too where. Where David suddenly uh, visits uh, his brother uh, Peter, because you know, again he's trying to go on the search for his daughter. He starts to place all these cameras around his room, you know, through the kitchen, through the living room, and all of that, uh, just so he can ask questions to to Peter about where he last saw his daughter, and where do they go out, and where do they have fun, and then. It leads to a bigger fight. Yeah, so then he was receiving a call. What would happen? 
so on and so forth. Then we begin to find out that it was taking that they that him and and Margot was taking weed. So that was sort of like a connection to uh, you know, John Cho's character Harold in the movie Harold and Kumar. <laughs> Uh, but the performance-wise, I thought John Cho did a great job playing the Deva Kim, the father who's, who's taken the risk to find his daughter. Deborah Best also did a fine job playing the Rosemary Vick, a tough detective trying to search all, all the clues and everything and try to solve the mystery. He also explains that uh, she has a son as well. Um, it is pretty intense. Uh, they even have the score that's done by Torian Barldale. Um So they actually played the, the score while, while showcasting the, the computer screen of, of all these uh, pop-ups of social media and, and everything that you have to search on just to find her daughter. Um, so, in a way, it's... Um, it's well done, well acted, um, despite of the concept being quite lazy, but that's okay. Also, Michelle Law did a great job playing Margot Kim. We also have uh, Joseph Lee playing Peter Kim, where he was just working on his uh, secret recipe and everything on, on dinner. So writer and director Anish uh, Jagante did a great job with this, so I, I guess it really shows how you can come up with a material like this, considering you know it's already been done. Um, that's for sure. We also begin to find out that um, Margot is uh, a big fan of Pokemon, well, mostly because David actually showed the, the t-shirt, and <laughs> that's why uh, David actually gave Margot the the Pokeball keychain, so that, that was really interesting. <laughs> Very nod right there. Um, so anyway, um, by any chance, um, check out Searching. Uh, even if you're not a big fan of the genre of, of found footage movies and everything, this is worth it. So I guess at this rate, at least now i found a few choices that I had to take. <laughs> so anyway, that's Searching, and I give the movie four stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.